All right. Good morning. Thank you so much for um, letting me be here with you all today. This is um, really neat. When Nate and I got together for coffee in literally early April, he said, hey, do you want to come? And I said, let me check. Um, so it's really exciting to be here today. I brought notes with me because otherwise um, I will not stay on time. Uh, a good friend of mine has said, Wendy lives by the adage, what, why use one word when 10 will do just fine? <laughs> so uh, let me tell you, I want to tell you a little about my story and how it intersects with the story of um, those who are struggling or identifying as LGBTQ+. And I uh, want to talk about it in terms of a journey from hiding to being fully known and a restored wholeness of my identity as a member of the world of women, as a particular type of woman, and as this particular woman, Wendy. There's a lot there, and I don't have time for all of it, so let's see if we can hit the highlights. I grew up in a church setting. I don't remember not knowing that God loved me. I have clear teaching on God, sin, God's plan of salvation, God's love for me evidenced by the work of Jesus on the cross and through his resurrection. So I made a decision as a very young child to identify as a Jesus follower. And I knew even then at seven or eight years old, it meant that I would live my life according to God's way with the help of the Holy Spirit residing in me. And that was what my life trajectory was going to look like. At the same time, though, as I grew up, I really did not fit the cultural and church stereotypes of what it means to be a woman. If I was a teenager now, that could be an issue. It wasn't a big deal in the 1970s and 80s, though. You could be a tomboy with no consequences, right? I'm grateful for that, if nothing else. Um, I'm also really grateful that I had a family identity. Um, I am one of four sisters. Um, and no brothers. And we were the only, in the cousin groups on both sides, of my, both of my huge families, we were the only girls who had sisters. So we were the Barth girls. We were my dad's girls, all of my growing up. And that gift, I think, played a big role for me because I knew I was a girl and I landed in this space of, I'm a girl, this is the kind of girl I am, and if you don't like it, it's so sad for you. You know, you can go pound sand. This is what you get. I don't know what to tell you. Um, and at the same time, though, I was definitely fighting the misogyny um, that I was encountering on, in my daily life. Unfortunately, I kind of took it a little, I took it too far, right? I went into this space of girls are better than boys, obviously, um, and found myself in this space of always fighting and striving to prove that I belonged. So I, with all of this, I set out to prove my worth, which was honestly not that hard for me. I was a quick learner. I retain a lot of facts really easily. I was capable physically. I had musical talents. I was successful. I won awards. <laughs> but underneath, I was completely terrified that people would find out I was an imposter, that I didn't really know what was going on. So as I entered adulthood then, I really found myself in this double life, if you will. I had a mask that I took with me everywhere. What people saw, I've got it all together, I've got the answers, I know what's going on. But underneath, that terrified little girl. And I showed that to almost no one. And if I did, it was so little at a time. And that worked for many years got married, had four kids, uh, moved around a lot. My husband was uh, in the Air Force for a little while. We had residency and then Air Force and moving here. We moved here and I experienced some medical trauma with a miscarriage that ended me up in the emergency room. And I already had two toddlers. So that stuff, shove it over there. We'll deal with it later. Don't have time to be sad. So in 2013, so what is that, 11 years ago, I found myself in my kitchen in the midst of a major depressive episode. I had no energy even to work up a feeling. Now, I don't know if you've experienced apathy at that level. It's, it's something else. But it meant that I could no longer keep up the facade of that double life, of the mask wearing anymore. 
And so began my journey of revelation. And the first revelation was that I could let people in. Thankfully, our family had spent the last eight years being part of a church community that was safe. It was safe there to say the hard thing, to say, I'm hurting, I'm doubting, I need help. And when I said those things to the people there, they rallied around me and they came to my aid and they walked with me through those dark places. So that was the first revelation. It's okay. It's safe to let people in. The second revelation was me then revealing myself and being honest with God. Because remember, I said I, I identified as a Jesus follower since I was really small. But I wasn't regularly being honest with God. And so over the next two years, I set aside time to regularly enter into listening and contemplative prayer times. Um, Outpost actually had a prayer room that was running every morning at the time, and I was there one to two days of, a week for two hours at a time. Just sitting with God, feeling and expressing my feelings, expressing my thoughts, and then listening to what God had to say about those feelings and those thoughts. And as I did that, I discovered the two great lies that I was carrying around in my heart. First one was, if people really knew me, they couldn't like me, they wouldn't love me, and that includes God. I believed that in the core of my being. I also believed, apparently, that the gospel didn't apply to me. Everybody else could come to Jesus just as they are and receive healing and forgiveness but I needed to clean myself up first. I grew up in the church. I had good teaching, and I had the gospel backwards for myself. And as God so gently revealed that to me, the third great revelation happened, and that was the great healing words of God. God spoke over me and began renewing me, renewing my heart, my mind, and my will, replacing the lies that I was believing with the truth of his word, healing those deep hurts of my heart that I haven't even talked about, <laughs> breaking off the chains of slavery to that old self, freeing me from the false identity, that mask that I wore that said, I got it. I know the answers. I got it all together. And he broke those chains off. I'm, and as time goes on, I'm realizing more and more just how deep that healing went because God restored my experience of belonging in the world of women. Previously in my life, I was fighting to prove that I belonged. And God said, well, you do, by nature of who you are and what I have created in you. And it came about in an interesting way. In the late summer of 2014, God very clearly said to me, for the next year, all you need to do is show up. And I said, excuse me, we do not just show up to things. We are prepared. We do the homework. We bring all the stuff we're supposed to. And God said, yeah, with what energy do you think you're going to do that? Because I was still in a place where every morning, the first I couldn't even get out of bed without a prayer for God, uh, for God to get me out of bed. And I was like, well, with the, OK, fine, we'll do it your way. <laughs> so that's how I talk to God sometimes. What I learned, though, is every time I showed up, God was there waiting with something to say to me, some new bit of healing and uh, things to tell me. And by resting with God, by being still and knowing he was God, God brought healing. My womanhood was confirmed. Now, my personality and the other essentials are the same. <laughs> but my motivations and reasons for doing things are new. I know who I am because of what God has said to me and about me. He said, I'm beautiful. I'm his daughter. I'm a princess. I'm a nurturer, a servant, an advisor, a teacher, a leader. But I'm no longer wrapped up in what others think about me. My only concern is what does God have to say? So that means I can be a woman who walks in the sci-fi fantasy world and the world of Jane Austen, because they're both fun. I could be a technically capable woman who knows how to build a website and run the soundboard, who also sings and plays the piano. I can be a woman who knows her way around the wood shop and the kitchen. 
And that is good. These are the gifts that God has put in me on purpose for his glory, as he says in Ephesians 2.10. We are God's masterpiece, workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. He prepared them beforehand because they match what he's created in us. And so this particular woman is the woman that he intended me to be, regardless of stereotypes. And I walk in the freedom that comes from knowing God's words about me. I want to walk where God's lead, where God leads and leave the results to the Holy Spirit. And that freedom is amazing. There's no more hiding. No more hiding. And this is the truth that I get to bring into ministry at Outpost. I actually started at Outpost right after the like most intensive two years of healing, walking through the valley of the shadow of death in the fall of 2015. But I do continue to learn and grow in this process of sanctification. When I took the president jo director job at Outpost, my Bible study lady said, are you going to stop coming to Thursday mornings? And I said, I better not. If I'm not here, you have my permission to track me down and get me back here. Because I need to be doing the work of sanctification as in my life so I can minister. I am being continue to be transformed from glory to glory. My story is like the story of so many who struggle with sexuality and identity, even though I didn't. Because the bottom line is, who gets to say who I am? Over my eight and a half years at Outpost, that question has not really changed. The types of answers people want to give change radically. There are many more choices now. But seeking answers from God is the work of discipleship, and that's what we want to do. That progressive sanctification and transformation. As I do that and invite people into that and walk alongside them. And that's the freedom that comes from that transformation as we submit to God and be with him. Thank you.